Well, hello there. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, a very tough topic, something that people are, get very heated up about. Everybody seems to have their own opinion. Everybody who, everybody just kind of, I don't know, it's just, it gets a little bit hectic. Um, much like when you're talking about things like evolution, things where people kind of just make up their mind and then they just go with it. And it gets very difficult to have a, a, a real uh, conversation. Um, and so I will do my best. So before we even get going, um, I'm not going to tell you if you should or you or if you shouldn't spank. That's not the goal. That's not my goal. Um, that's a decision that you as a parent have to make, and that's a decision that you have to take into account um, the situation. Like, for instance, some people can't spank because they foster a child. Um, so obviously, uh, if something's legal or illegal for you to do, that's something that you have to take into account as well. So my goal is not to persuade you into um, my line of thinking. I just want to kind of give a little bit of um, balance to the issue. Uh, just so you know my qualifications, I currently have five kids. Um, I have raised seven. Um, so I, I, mean, I mean, this is something that I do I do know about. Um, I've dealt uh, two of the kids, two of the seven uh, were autistic. Um, I have experience with druggy babies. I have experience with, I don't want to use the word, but um, regular healthy babies. Um, so, that, you know, that's something that, that, that I'm very aware of. Um, I don't have any experience with um, retardations, um, uh, Down syndrome, anything like that. I really don't have experience with that. Um, I would just go ahead and nip this in the butt. If you have a child who is uh, mentally uh, disabled in, in various ways, um, you might you might want to think about if if you're a big firm believer in spanking, you might want to think about not doing that with that child. Um, once again, I, I'm not saying anything against spanking or whatever. It's just that um, you have to take into account their ability to process the information and uh, to learn. You know, if if you're not actually achieving anything by your action, you should probably stop and say, if I'm not getting any results and I'm not achieving what I'm wanting, maybe I need to think of a different way. So I, that's that's just something to kind of, before we even get going. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the research on either side. I know that people who are for spanking, they'll have a lot of research themselves. Um, sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's just um, this kind of idea that if you um, are religious, you have to uh, believe in spanking. Um, and then there's obviously the people who don't believe in spanking, uh, who you know obviously have their own research, and everybody just kind of bends the research to whatever they want it to say, and they don't actually ask any questions of it. They just say, okay, this is just the way that I want to believe, and this research backs up my opinion. How convenient. So uh, I'm not even going to try and... Uh, and try and persuade you on that. You know that's kind of just a lost cause, anyways. Um, usually, if people make that decision and say, you know what, this is what I'm going to believe in, I'm, you, get, you just can't persuade me. It's like, well, then you really can't persuade them. People have to be willing to learn and, and change those kinds of things. Uh, so, with that being said, I might want to go ahead and give you the little addendum here that if you're not someone who wants to grow and learn and think, uh, you probably shouldn't watch this video. So, there's that. Now. Um, one of the big things I hear come into the conversation of whether or not to spank is, but doesn't the Bible tell me to spank? Now, that's kind of a weighted question. I'm not going to talk about culture and, and, and context, although those things do definitely come into play, and you have to realize that we're in a different age now. Now, I'm not, once again, that doesn't mean yes or no, but that's something you have to consider. But with that being said, the book of Proverbs is not a book of commands. It is not a book of, um, what's it called, um, promises. Um, for instance, consider the people who say, okay, the, the proverb says that if I train a child up in the way that he should go, uh, when he's older, he won't depart from it. So if I just teach my kids about Jesus when they're, when they're a, a toddler, you know, they'll never leave the faith. And then they do leave the faith, and it's like, oh, 
well, I didn't see that one. I guess the I guess the Bible is a liar. And it's like, no, no, no. You you can't misapply something and then say that the Bible is wrong. No, you're just misapplying it. You're misunderstanding it. You really need to take it for what it is. And so when we're looking at the book of Proverbs, Proverbs it's principles that are proven true by experience. Okay, so let's let's look at this now that we've kind of ripped off that band-aid. Proverbs 29, 17 says this. Discipline your son and he will give you rest. He will give delight to your heart. Now, if you've ever seen an undisciplined child, you know exactly what this verse is talking about. They throw themselves on the floor in Walmart. They, uh, they're just a huge embarrassment. They, they get away with murder. Um, you see rich kids do this a lot of times. They'll go and get in all kinds of trouble, and then boo-hoo, it's that other person's fault. And it's just a constant heartache because they've never learned uh, boundaries. They've never learned uh, consequences of their action because everybody else always bells them out. So, I mean, th those are definitely things to take into account. And, and, and that's absolutely something that doesn't really apply to the aspect of, so should I spank? It's not really telling you whether you should or shouldn't spank. It's just saying that this is, this is something that, that you really can't brush off. You know, oh, well, my parents are so hard on me. I just want to give my kids what I never had. You can't make knee-jerk reactions like that and emotional reactions. You have to make logical reactions. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, just just a little bit. So thirteen twenty four. This is the other. The, this is the other big one, and it talks about in Proverbs. It says, "The fool is I forget how it words it, um, but the rod is made for the fool." In other words, foolish people do foolish things. They get themselves into problems, and they deserve what they get because they're just they refuse to learn. They refuse to change. They keep doing the same stupid things over and over again. So then that takes us to thir Proverbs 13.24, and it says this, Whoever spares the rod hates the sun. Now this is talking about uh, the rod of correction, uh, discipline, spanking. Um, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. So this definitely sounds like it's teaching us to spank. Um, it definitely does sound like that. So that's something that you have to think about with wherever you go with this. It definitely does sound like 1324 is trying to encourage us to do that. But once you're, once again, remember this not commands. So if I'm going to this in the same way I go to like the book of Leviticus, it's going to be like this. Thou shalt do this. This is the absolute standard. If I'm going to this as a book of Proverbs, I need to stop and say, okay, some very wise people said this. So I need to stop and think about what's best in the situation, not what feels right or feels wrong, what is best. So with that being said, I really don't think that this is the only way to do something is through spanking. I really don't. Um, I, I really don't. Um, but there is still lessons to learn from this, even if you don't believe in spanking. Sometimes it's hard to discipline and correct a child. Maybe your heart just melts for them. You just... You love them so much, you want you want what's best for them, and you just hate getting them in trouble. I, I get that. And honestly, you should be concerned if you enjoy getting them in trouble. That's probably a bad thing. But like, here's a good example. Um, my son did something, and I had to let him not do something. He was very upset that he didn't get to do that thing. He was more upset that he didn't get to do that than if I would have given him a spanking. But I love him, and so I had to teach him consequences. He had some. He had some money that he that somebody had given him, and he wanted to go buy a toy. And I was very, very specific. I, I, I said, "Look, you can buy something, but listen, you, you once this money is gone, it's gone. And if you can't afford the toy, I'm not going to pay for the difference. You have to find a toy that you can afford." And so I taught him about, um, you know, that. And so he decided to buy himself and his sister a cup of tea. It's fine. But then I explained to him, I said, now, that means that you don't ha you have this much less to spend on a toy. And he understood. So then he goes in, he found a toy that was in his price range, and he, and he bought that. And then he got the change, and he was all kinds of excited because he got to play with his, with his change. So he was able to learn a lesson and make the most out of an opportunity. Now, what some, sometimes what we do is we try and either overly spoil them or we try and break them into the harshness of life. The world is harsh. You don't have to break it in. You have to be there to support them and encourage them and guide them and shape and mold them. 
but at the same time, if you try and spoil them, you're really just going to do them a great disservice. They need to know the value of money, the value of time, um, that people in the world aren't just going to revolve their whole life around them. Like, I was very disgusted when this um, when this young uh, white uh, teenager raped a girl, and the judge just let him off because he didn't want to wreck his future. That's not doing anybody any favors. First off, that poor girl who didn't get tab justice. Second off, that, that poor boy, because he could have learned a very valuable lesson, a very valuable lesson that he could have then gone on to teach his kids after him. And just a, a great time for people who were watching the case to be able to teach their sons about respecting women. But instead, the moral was lost. The lesson was lost. Because instead of making the hard decision, they made the easy one. Now let's look at this again. Whoever spares the rod hates his son. That guy who got off scot-free for raping that girl, they, nobody did him any favors. Nobody did him any favors. But he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. The best thing to have done, to have done for everybody, not just for him, for the girl. I, I, I really feel like this is something that we're overlooking here. Oh, the boy, the boy. What about the girl? If that was my daughter, I'd be very upset. You know, I, I read these cases where uh, somebody was raping this girl and the, and the father goes and kills the person who was raping. I, I get that. I have two girls. I get that. I, I totally understand. Um, when I Before I had kids, I, I didn't understand. I thought, ah, oh, you just forgive them and move on. <sighs> when you have kids, it changes things. It changes things. So, okay, that, that's just kind of a look at, at the Bible there. Now remember, the Bible doesn't say all throughout the pages, thou shalt spank. It teaches us very valuable lessons that don't necessarily apply just to spanking. Those, those verses that we read, does that say it's only talking about spanking? I cannot glean any wisdom or knowledge from this unless I believe in spanking. No. Uh, the lessons that we just gleaned from that, that's for anybody who has kids. So um, one thing that needs to be needs to be mentioned is that sometimes it's considered you know a good thing um, if instead of instead of you know spanking is the bad thing and there's a bunch of other things it didn't really matter but I would argue that that's kind of a false idea spanking especially when you have the right attitude when you're spanking and you're not doing it out of anger you're doing it for what's best for the child is better in some cases than than these things first off yelling yelling at your kids that that doesn't teach them anything and it teaches them how far they can push you before and you know how how much they can get their way before you'll bend how how far they can make you bend before you get angry um, it teaches them the goal is not to do what's right. The goal is to avoid making you angry. And because you're inconsistent, it sends a very confusing message to them. Kids really do love lines and, and, and borders and clearly defined uh, goals and, and achievements. Um, that's why I think a, a prize board works so great with kids. You know, hey, you'll get stickers and then the stickers add up to prizes. It really works good with the kids because they get to see it. And then they get to attach the idea of currency. Um, you work for your, your, with your time. You spend working that you get stuff, and then you spend you spend that. So it kind of gives that, that idea um, of the world. Now, if you're familiar with public school, a lot of the things that are being done in public school are kind of not really for the kids' best interest. Just um, that's the way we've always done it. And so instead of reinventing school, we just kind of keep redoing the same thing over and over again. Um, instead of teaching the kids how to do laundry and how to uh, clean, which, by the way, the parents should be doing, um, how to you know get a job, how, what's required when you get a job, what, what it's like to be in, in your interview, um, filing taxes, all these important things to know. Instead, we're wasting 12 years of their life to tell them 12 different grades of math, um, a bunch of different history that is, first off, censored, a lot of things are dropped from history books. I just don't understand why, um, you know. And then very limited scopes of science and just all kinds of things where we're not teaching them critical thinking skills. So, with that being said, yelling doesn't really achieve much. 
and also it teaches them how to treat people, which is not good. Um, it teaches them, well, it's just, just a lot of things, and, and we could keep on going, but you see, yelling just isn't good. Um, shaming, um, this is where you where you talk down to them in, in a kind of way to make them feel stupid or dumb, uh, especially in front of other, uh, name calling, it, it goes right along with this you idiot you know stuff like that where it's like oh you know this is not this is not good you're teaching them how to act you are teaching them that they don't have value um there's just a lot of things there you know and i understand that the world is a harsh place and we can't you know soft foot around it i, I get that but there is a certain point where it's kind of counterproductive and Honestly, most of the time, kids need encouragement. They need validation. Hey, you did a great job. You did that really good. They need praise. Not for doing nothing. They should have to work for their praise. Absolutely. I'm not trying to say everybody gets a trophy. That's just stupid. They need personal accomplishment. But there, you, you can't go into this thing looking at it as, you know, over here and over here. The right wing and the left wing, oftentimes the middle is, is, is very wise. Like maybe this. We typically don't spank, but sometimes something calls for a spanking. And when I say sometimes, I mean like maybe, you know, uh, once a week, something like that. You know what I mean? But if it's something where it's like, you know, 15 times an hour, eh, it might not – there might be better ways to, to approach this. Um, I, I do believe in spanking, but I believe that spanking is the last resort, not the first. I believe that it should only be done for – well, I'll talk about that in just a minute, but only be done for, for big things, not for everything. There are some people who just give spankings about everything. I, that's just not smart. So, okay, uh, shaming them, name-calling, that kind of stuff, um, especially in front of people. If you have something to say to your kid, really take them aside and talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it will mean a lot more to them. They'll listen better. Um, there won't be distractions. There's just a load of different benefits of that. Uh, attacking them, and I'm not just talking about physically attacking. That's obviously that's that's bad and stupid. I'm talking about phys I'm talking about uh, attacking them like you know, um, getting all up in their business and you know, uh, you know, real talk, yelling in their face and that kind of. The military thing is good for discipline, but discipline really has to be tempered with love. Uh, you can you can have just really great mannered kids, but if they don't know that you love them, it's kind of all pointless. But at the same time, if you have a parent who loves but doesn't have any discipline, that kind of gets pointless too because you're not really creating a productive member of society. Um, <clears throat> when they break stuff, they should have to you know obviously pay for it. So okay, I think we're spending enough time there. Um, you you shouldn't be abusing your child physically or verbally. You know, it just that that shouldn't be happening. Spankings don't have to be abusive. Um, and you might say, oh well, how? Well, well there's a lot of ways. <laughs> First off, you probably shouldn't use something like a piece of metal. You should probably use something like your hand, where you can feel how hard you're hitting. And you should probably test it against yourself first. Um, yeah, maybe there are alternatives like. Just a real, real soft flick that does more to annoy and get attention than it does to actually cause pain. The, the, these are these are good ideas here, especially if you are a firm believer in abuse, and spanking. Maybe learn to dial it back and and learn other that there's other ways you can do stuff. And then what happens is you start creating a child that is too rough, and the only way you can you can get through to them is by continuing to get rougher and rougher, threatening and you know, it just becomes a thing where it's not really helping the child to push himself and to be their best. Um, so just, you know, think about these things. Um, you, you shouldn't be neglecting your child. Um, where you're spending all your time looking at your phone while you're around them. I mean, these are just... It's not that hard to be a good person, but for whatever reason, when, when we're around our kids, we stop trying. We go to work and we work really hard and we talk to people. Oh, everything's great. We get home. Our wife doesn't get any of our attention. Our kids, none of our attention. Sometimes they don't even see us for the whole day. They don't even talk to us for the whole day. That's not good. Um, you know, it, that's just not good. Your kids really do need you. Um, there's just so many studies that show the effects of just having a father. Not even having a good father or a father that's not abusive. Just having a father in the picture 
uh, and what it does for, for lower crime rates and for lower prison and just so many different things. Really, one of the best things you can do is just be there for your child. And some people say, well, I, I'm not going to be a good father. Here's the thing. Being there is infinitely better than not being there, even if you're the world's worst father. So, I mean, take that into account. Now, let me add, add an addendum. Uh, there's sometimes that people kind of cook themselves. My spouse is never there for the child, so I need to divorce them and get and marry somebody else. Uh, that's not going to work for the kid. And I'll tell you why. That's not. First off, divorce wrecks a home, and it causes a lot of trust issues with the child, a lot of developmental issues with the child. There's just a lot of problems that it causes. So that that's not great. Saying enough, the child's not necessarily going to accept the new partner like the old partner. And just because you're hungry for sex doesn't mean you should put it off, put it off as and, and use your child as an excuse for getting a divorce. So just some things to think about. Um, you need to uh, work on you and you being healthy. Um, oh, but my, my spouse, don't worry about your spouse, you worry about you. Um, so, okay, uh, you, you shouldn't be mistreating your child. So these are all kinds of, I hope, obviously obvious things. I really do hope. Um, if you want to teach a child, the best way you can teach them is by example. So how are you treating people? How are you talking to them? Uh, do you let them do stuff with you? Do you let them wash the dishes with you? Do you let them work outside with you? Oh, well, it's going to take longer. It's going to be harder. They're going to get in the way. Yeah, absolutely. But that's kind of the the way you have an apprentice. Children really do learn best by example. Um, and also there's the idea that discipline, it, I know when we hear the word discipline, we think abuse. That's just not true. Um, First off, like I was saying, spanking doesn't have to be abusive. It really doesn't. Uh, a lot of us have bad examples, and so we just assume that the two are synonymous. So that's the first thing. Um, also, there's a lot more to disciplining than spanking. Part of disciplining is instructing, um, giving pointers, um, correcting, encouraging, um, uh Grounding timeouts, you know, there's just a lot of different ways that discipline is accomplished. Don't think of discipline as a as a nasty word. I mean, it, it's a good word, um, but the problem is, is it needs to be done correctly. Every kid has strong areas and weak areas. This, these, let me go spend a little bit of time on this. Where's my mouse? There it is. Um, let me spend a little bit of time on this. Okay. Um, every kid has strong areas and weak areas. Um, some of them are good at puzzles. Some of them are not. Um, some of them you, you have to explain a little bit better. Some of them, you know, they could understand a, a moose call. I mean, some of them are just smart. Not all your kids are going to have the same mental abilities. Not all of them are going to have the same physical abilities. Um, some are going to be natural leaders. Some are just going to be shy. Uh, th there's a lot of different character traits. So every kid has strong areas and weak areas. Uh, some of them are going to be messy. Some of them are going to be real organized, like a neat freak. You have to just kind of roll with it because you're not trying to make your child how you want them to be. You're trying to help them be the best them that they can be. Um, they all have different love languages. If you're unfamiliar with a love language, that's the way that we receive love the best. Some of us, um, for instance, spend time with me. Some of us, um, you know, uh, what are the other ones? Um, there's... Um, Touch. Some of us require touch. So this would be like, for in the case of a child, hugs. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about molestation or anything gross like that. I'm talking about more of just like validating them. When you talk to them, maybe put your hand on their shoulder. Let them know that just because you get them in trouble doesn't mean that you hate them. You know, it, you have to do things with the right attitude. And you might say, oh, well, they're doing this. Yeah, so why are you, the adult, acting like a child because your child is acting like a child? See, you can't expect your child to be acting like you want them to act at 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever. You have to say, compared to their age, like, okay, I have a five-year-old and he's doing this. Well, I don't want him to do that. Well, he's five. I, I know seven-year-olds are still doing that. You see what I mean? So maybe maybe take it a little bit easier. Also, keep in mind that different siblings are going to rub off on each other differently. Um, sometimes it's going to affect their speech. Maybe an older child would talk like a baby. Um, sometimes uh, a younger child will start you know, eating boogers or something like that because they see the older child doing it. 
Um, some, sometimes uh, poop problems where it reverts. Sometimes a boy is going to try and act like his sister, act like a girl, dress like a girl because she gets attention he doesn't. Um, and they, in and, and, and their, in their mind, they think, okay, so daddy or and mommy love them, but not me, or you know something like that. Um, which is another reason why I'm so against sex changes, in, especially in children. If you're a full-grown adult, there are massive side effects that are just really disastrous. Obviously, the mental trauma that's necessary for you to have to do something like cut off your genitalia. But still, you know, when you're an adult, I feel like if you want to make a really stupid mistake, that that's whatever. But when you when you have a kid, giving them these hormones first off causes cancer, causes a lot of issues with development, and then it's usually a temporary problem. In fact, the problem is is that these things are psychological warning signs that there is something that's happening that you need to pay attention to. But instead of paying attention, what we do is we say, no, you're validated in, in this because I don't want to you know, tear you down. So it, however you choose to live is up to you. You can be you know, a homosexual. You can be um, a boy trapped in a girl's body. You can be whatever you want to be. And it's like, well, no, you, you really can't be whatever you want to be. And so instead of giving them that instruction and, and that clear um, view of the world, the, the natural view of the world, y you confuse them. And then you say something like this, oh, well, uh, pedophilia isn't that wrong. Or uh, pedophilia is wrong, and uh, you know, love is love except for in this case. And it's like, well, that's not going to work on a kid. A kids really need defined lines. They need, why is it like that? Your kids are going to naturally have these just um, curiosities. Why is it like that? Why? They want answers. Now, this is not always a bad thing. Now, sometimes the kids kind of get a little bit too into it where they're asking why about everything. Go clean up your room. Why? Because I said so. Like, what is this? <laughs> Anyways, but then there's other times it's going to be like, an explanation is really good, and you want to build up that curiosity. So keep these in mind. So different kids have different love languages. Um, some require touch. Some require time. You know, they all re obviously you should be spending time with all your kids. But there's some ways that your child is just going to receive a little bit better. Um, when you get them in trouble, um, always get down on their level. Don't talk down to them. It's something that is just it will help them to pay attention. Um, also, you might want to force them to look in your eyes. Now, I don't mean force like grab their head. Um, <laughs> no, I mean like especially if they're looking off. Maybe just kind of go like this. The blinders. You you put your hands next to their eyes. And uh, you look them in the eyes, and, and they kind of get used to the idea of, of interaction, especially if they have something like autism. You want to connect with them on a one-on-one -on -one level uh, because, really, autistic kids, you can do a lot to help them and to function and all kinds of different stuff. But if you just kind of say, oh, they're autistic, so I'm not even going to work with them, well, then they're going to have you know, just long-lasting side effects. Anyways, um, also, different kids have different learning styles. Um, Sometimes, sometimes you need a picture. Sometimes you just need words. And different ways like that is what I'm talking about. So, okay. Um, and obviously, I feel like this should go without saying, but I still see stupid stuff like this. Uh, mommy needs wine. Okay, let me just kind of back off there. Don't be an alcoholic, Karen. Maybe um, if you can't give up drinking, don't drink around your children. Just throwing this out there. Uh, you need to be conscious, especially when you have children. You need to be aware. You need to be present. Um, what happens if the child gets up in the middle of the night and you're passed out drunk? I mean, there's just a lot of things that you really shouldn't mix uh, child raising with drugs or alcohol. And why I say this, alcohol really is drugs, but it's fine. Uh, and so these are kinds of things that you have to really take into account. So now that we went through all of that, let's talk about the actual spanking. If you spank, if, if, if you decide that spanking is the right course of action for you and, and you're a firm believer in it, you can't be swayed, that's fine. I just want to give you a few pointers. Number one, don't spank because you've had enough. Your attitude is very important. And if you do this, well, I just had enough of your attitude. Okay, calm down, okay? Just take a deep breath there. Maybe your attitude is the one that sucks, and yours is the one that you need to work on you a little bit. Maybe, for instance, learn how to take a deep breath. Maybe learn how to get one of those little squeezy things like, um, like these. And 
And if it, hey, if, if it helps, then hey, you do it. Um, you're, you're not getting them in trouble just because you're tired of them making noise or you're tired of them doing this. Or Sometimes we have just too many rules. Rules about stupid stuff. You know what I mean? Um, well, <coughs> no running in the house. Okay, that's fine if that's your rule. Why is it your rule? Make sure that you can answer logically and coherently what matters so much to enforce that rule. And also, that's not really something to spank about. So your kid runs in the house, they're not listening. What we do is we connect things with larger issues. Well, they're not listening to me. Generality. How are they not listening to you? Well, they're running in the house. So a child is playing, and you're connecting it to this larger idea of them being rebellious. And so that's causing you to be extremely harsh on the child when they don't really deserve it. So these are just kind of things to, to take into account. Your attitude is very important. How you get them in trouble is even more important than getting them in trouble because they're learning how to be a, an, an adult from you. Um, whether you like it or not, when children are younger, you are their hero, and they're going to look to you for to explain the world, to put things in its correct lens. So... Don't just think because you've had enough. Yeah, not because they are acting their age. Oh, well, my five-year-old is acting like a five-year-old. Whack, 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 whack. Okay, calm down. You can't expect for a five-year-old to act like a 35-year-old. It's not going to happen. Uh, in fact, in, in boys, I believe, um, well, in children, either way, in children in general, um, their reasoning doesn't even develop until they're in their 20s. So, the, you know, their logical reasoning. So think about this. I don't fully understand the consequences of my actions, even as a senior in high school, but yet we're sometimes teaching and treating them and giving them freedom that's undeserved. See, a lot of times we go to the other extreme and we say, okay, here's all this responsibility, and, you, and there's no accountability here. So you get to do whatever you want, and I'm not going to check on you. There's no consequences. If you, the person in authority, are giving your child responsibility – then there needs to be some kind of an accountability. Okay, you can have this phone, but let's put some watches in place so you can't get into porn. Something like that. Let's put some watches so you can't go out and just start, you know, doing drugs and all kinds of stupid stuff. Let's put, if you can have a TV, okay, let's have it where there's an off time. Let's have it where you go to sleep at 10 at night or 12 at night or whatever, rather than 4 in the morning. And if you're trying to do a free parent model where, um, you know, oh, we're just friends, we're all just hanging out, you know. Uh, you know, here's the thing that's really gonna confuse them as they get older. Um, and just because you're all freestyle doesn't mean that once they get older, they're really gonna appreciate that model. Um, there's just a lot of things where, where we have to learn about consequences for actions. So, anyways, uh, you don't give spankings because they mess up. Sometimes kids just forget. Sometimes they do something wrong, and it's just because they messed up. Well, no child of mine's going to do that. Well, hold on. Okay, you can't expect perfection, and you can't expect for yourself to be validated as a parent by having perfect kids. You are either going to be a good parent or a bad parent, and that's fully dependent on you and your actions. And then your children are going to have to make their own decision. Now, when they're when they're younger, you can definitely mold, and there's a whole different process there. Um, babies, you really can't hold to much of a standard. Toddler, you just give the generalities. Um, Preteen, you give a little bit more freedom, but you still give them more specifics and help them work through those things. As they're a teenager, they're, they're, they're striving to figure out who am I. And so there's going to be a lot more separation between um, how they want to do things and how you want to do things. And you really have to take a step back and say, look, Let's not fight about things that aren't important. Um, you know, do your homework. Well, I don't want to. You know, is this really something that you want to fight about? And you really have to, a lot of, a lot of parent and child raising is picking your battles, deciding which things are overly important, which things aren't. Now, I know this is a lot of information. That's because I don't want to keep having, <laughs> having videos about this. So I'm trying to talk about all the different aspects. Um, you don't give a spanking as a first course of action. Um, and I would also say that you don't give spankings once kids reach a certain age. Spankings 
really have a very limited window. Um, let's say, for instance, it'll work on an eight-year-old, but then you know a fourteen-year-old. You know, it'll work on an eight-year-old, but um, a one-year-old. Um, see what I mean? There, there's just some things that you have to stop and say, "This is a little ridiculous." You know, so you really have a very limited window of spanking. If you do spank, remember that. If you're still spanking your six, sixteen-year-old, you're, you're you're being too 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 rough. They they they're gonna just resent you for it, and it's gonna affect when they move out of the house, the relationship that you have with them, with their grandkid, with your grandkids. These are just things you have to think about. You have to do things, remembering that things won't always be like they are now. Um, so not as a first course of action. So they so they do something like that, like they lie to you. Oh, I hate liars. Okay, calm down. What your child just heard is, you messed up too bad. I don't love you anymore. So you really have to watch out how you say things. Um, obviously, spanking is not the first course of action. Well, I I've been getting them in trouble for spanking every single day. I understand that, and when you know, obviously, you treat something different when it's a common occurrence versus when it's not. But maybe a bigger question is, why are they doing this, and what can I do to? help them to learn without having to go that route again. A lot of times kids will lie because they don't want to get spanked. So then you spank them and it's like, you know, there's this just re repeating, you know, thing. So maybe um, good rewards for not lying and have those outweigh, you know, any punishment that comes from lying. So, you know, just some ideas here. Uh, it can't be your first uh, first course of action. Uh, we just always go to spanking. Also, limit how many spankings you give. Um, you know, if at one time for one thing, you really shouldn't give more than one. But if you're going to give more than one, don't go over three. Let there be a cap at three. You know, if you're if you're um, if you're having like, okay, we're going to give ten spankings. Like, whoa, whoa. Um, also, how often? Like, for instance, if you're giving spankings all throughout the day. Probably not the greatest of, greatest of ideas. Uh, that kind of should tell you that you're kind of leaning into spankings a little bit too much. And that has nothing to do with the Bible. So stop stop using the Bible as a quote for your um, inability to uh, parent creatively. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Um, a lot of times we want to put minimal effort into the things that are the most important. Uh, C.S. Lewis, I actually have it uh, as a bookmark. And here on my window it says, Children are not distractions for more important work. They are the most important work. And really the attitude that you take into child rearing is, is really important. Um, before you even have kids, you need to have a firm, loving, committed relationship. Not a boyfriend who moved in. Not, oh, well, I slept with this guy and got pregnant, but then we broke up, and so I got with this guy, and now we're living together. Get out of that nonsense. Like, you don't need sex that bad. Your child needs a... a, a loving environment it needs um it needs solidity it needs firmness it needs structure okay make sure that you and your spouse are on the same page about parenting tactics and if you have a disagreement maybe not in front of the kids there's just some good ideas there um you know they need to know that you guys are on the same page if they ask one it needs to be a consistent answer with both it doesn't need to be a Oh, well, that's why you don't go to your mommy, because she's too rough. You, you see what I mean? Like, you, 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 can't, you can't do that. You can't pit your kids against your spouse. And that's one of the problems that happens with divorce. And typically with divorce, there's bitterness and, and bad attitude, so then you start pitting your kids against the other spouse, and there's just a lot of things that happens there, but that's beside the point. Um, so, so limit how often. Don't spank as hard as you can. Um, there, there needs to be a point where... I will only do this much. Once again, try it on yourself. Like, okay. Okay, all right. Um, maybe flicking is a good alternative. Oh, that kind of hurts, but it's not really like a pain or like a, uh, an annoyance. Okay, well, you know, maybe instead of, you know, I'm giving my kids five spankings about this, maybe instead of that, scrap that, and I can just give one flick. They're not listening. Just a little flick in the ear. Just, it's just an irritating thing. It's not something that's actually going to cause pain. See what I mean? Where, okay, I'm not asking you. I, I, I'm asking you to meet me in the middle. Instead of giving up spanking, instead of not spanking at all, let's let's maybe see if there's a healthy place in the middle that we can we can find. Okay? 
Um, uh, typically, spanking should only be for moral failure after other routes have been tried. So what's a moral failure? Okay, so this would be like um, punching or hitting, biting. Uh, biting typically is only in, in younger toddlers and, and for that. Um, what I do, um, and this might sound terrible, but it actually really did work. Um, somebody would um, had this one that wanted to bite everybody about everything. And so what I did is I bit them back. Now, because I didn't let the sibling bite them back because, well, there's a lot of reasons for that. And what I did is I didn't go real hard. And she got to see that it hurt, but I was able to make sure that I wasn't actually hurting her. See what I mean? Just kind of um, showing her the consequences and that kind of stuff. So you really had to be careful for that, though, because, I mean, once again, there is a very important line about abuse. And so you really have to make sure that you're doing things for the kid's best interest, um, helping them to understand. It, it's not about you or how you were raised or, you know, it, you're trying to help them to grow and learn. And most of the time, spanking is not required. I, I know that might not be an unpopular opinion with people who, who spank, but really there, there's just a lot of times you need to be more creative. So maybe, you know, you've been working with, with your kid about not lying. You're going through different things. You're, you're, you're trying to reward the good behavior, grounding, maybe timeouts, maybe this and that. And then finally, after like months of, of trying to work with them, it's not working. Then a spanking might be in order. You know, something like that where it doesn't have to be the first way. It's the last option. Um, common reasons for uh, for kids acting out, these are two of them, very big ones, not giving them enough time. If you are trying to treat your kids like they're a well-oiled machine, um, that they're just expected to be perfect all the time and you don't have any obligations, that's just bad parenting. Um, but then at the same time, you can't coddle your kids because they need to learn how to... Uh, comfort themselves. This is something that is is um, a psychological necessity. Um, the same as ignoring and neglecting your child is is bad. Also, the same way um, over coddling them is. Maybe, for instance, when they're crying, teach them to use their words instead of just screaming. Maybe teach them to ask for something. Uh, Hold me, please. Um, owie, something like that. It, obviously, it depends on the age of the child, and you really have to kind of be flexible there. Um, but maybe point them in a, in a direction of how they can fix it, how they can. Um, because, you know, as they get older, they need to learn coping. And here's the thing. If you have a child with things like um, anxiety, you have to teach them how to cope with anxiety without pushing them too hard. Um, you know, oftentimes what we do is when we have a child with a disability, we just kind of give them free reign, no expectations. And then sometimes when we don't have a child without, ex without um, you know, any kind of a problem, we expect too much and it, it, those just are not healthy places to be in so uh, another common reason for a kid acting out is just a board you know if you're having them sitting there doing nothing maybe just give them a book to like out um, give them a toy something where it's not just you know nothing all the time um, and just by the way I don't ever leave your kids in the car don't don't do that it, it gets way too hot in the car um, okay I don't have expectations they can't fulfill and once you've given, gotten them in trouble for something, make sure that you follow it up with something positive. Encourage them. Let them know that, hey, it's okay. We'll, try, we'll just try again. You know, uh, Don't make them think that it's the end of the world, that you've had enough of them just because they messed up. You'll, you'll have a lot better results, too, if you follow this kind of, kind of a model. So really, here's the big takeaway from this. If you spank, remember that spanking is not the fix-all. It's not. So what about if you don't spank? Well, this is going to be a lot shorter, but still some things that need to be said. Now, before we actually go to the not spanking aspect, don't do what you do to appease other people. And Well, I'm doing this because my parents. And don't, don't discipline your kids in different ways in different places. Your kids need to know that there's consistency, that whether you're on the phone or talking to somebody or at somebody else's house or at your house, that this is how we act. So remember that. Do what is right for the child. Oh, well, my mom wants me to spank for everything. Oh, well, my grandma says that I shouldn't spank about anything. Look, I, if you're going to spank, that's your decision. If it's not, that's your decision. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not your boss. I'm just trying to help you find a more productive way 
uh, to parent. So with that being said, don't do what you do to appease others. Figure out what's the right thing to do and what's best for your child, and then do that. Now, sometimes what we do is we try to micromanage everybody else. Everybody else needs to parent like I parent. That's not true either. Um, when you see a kid, especially a kid that's acting bratty, remember that A, they might just be having a bad day. B, they might have a problem that you don't know about, uh, mental or whatever. Uh, C, not everything is about respect. I, I get that teacher kid respect, I get it, but not everything is about respect. And uh, different kids need different need different ways. Oh, my kids would never act like that. Oh, so you were in complete control of your kids all the time. They never did anything beside, behind your back? Come on. Um, anyways, don't have no expectations. If, if you don't spank, that's fine. The, the, the goal is not, to, not to, is not to spank. But make sure that your kids know that you have expectations. I expect you to act like this. This is the goal that we're shooting for. I expect you to be able to do this. Um, I expect that when we're in a restaurant that you don't throw your food on the floor. This is what I expect of you. So, you know, that that's good. Um, and then remember that kids, even if you're not going to spank, that they, you need to find some way to teach them about responsibility. That's, you know, where they have tasks that they are expected to do. Um, maybe uh, helping around the house. Maybe... Um, you know, uh, the idea of family unity. Don't build your whole your whole world around your kids. Your kids don't need to be the center of your universe. They need to be a part of a family circle unit. Okay? What people do is they once again go to the extremes. Either their whole world revolves around their kid or their kid is pushed out of the family circle and they let the kid know, you are wasting my time. You are, I, I could be doing something that's more important. My work is more important. My, my hobbies are more important. And you're taking away from that and I'm not very happy about it. So either of those extremes they aren't great. You're, you're trying to create a, a, a family unit and you're trying to create something stable there. Uh, we'll talk about more about that in just a second. So uh, remember that you're, and that uh, kids need to learn responsibility. They need to learn that something is expected of them. They also need to learn about respect. Um, this is how we act. You know, we respect people in authority. We, we, we do things, we do what we're told, you know, the idea of obedience. These are things that are really, really life essentials. Now, obviously, you should, uh, you should also teach them about critical thinking and not doing something immoral just because someone in authority said so, that kind of stuff. But maybe the basis is teaching respect, and as they get older, teach them those different things. Um, they need to know that there are rules and that there are consequences uh, to everything that they do. Um, if you don't spank, there's, there's, this is going to be one of the issues you're going to have to face. It's going to be very, you're going to have to be, get creative again. Okay, so um, that there are rules, there are clearly defined lines. We don't do this, we do do this, and there are consequences for their actions. Well, you acted like, like this. You acted out. You told, you did what I told you not to do. You broke this. Now you have to pay for that. Now maybe they're a toddler. Yeah, this is something I actually did with my, did with my toddler. I said, okay, now you broke that. You have to pay for that. Now they don't have a job, obviously. So I said, okay, you have to do these things, and you get uh, stickers for doing these things. But instead of you getting stickers for your sticker board, the stickers go to me, and you will pay for it by earning stickers. And so they learned that there was, you know, consequences for their actions. Little things like that. You just get creative. Try something. Be, don't be afraid to try things. It's okay if you don't have all the answers. It's okay if you mess up. The idea is that you just keep going. As a parent, you're not going to be perfect. You just have to accept that. Um, and here's a, here's something that we oftentimes do. Okay, so I have all the answers. How many kids do you have? Oh, I don't have kids. But my kids are never going to act like this. Th this is what we're going to do. I'm going to do this when I have kids. My, my kids will never do that. Foolishness. Foolishness. Just because you read a couple books from people with degrees doesn't mean that you know anything about parenting. Just remember that. There's a certain amount of humility that you need to have. And maybe listen to other people who have done it before. Uh, and here's another thing that we do wrong. Just because we've had plenty of kids, we think, okay, well, that means that I know it all. I can't ever learn anything. That's just a stupid idea. Uh, I've raised seven. Raised, raising, both and. Uh, and but I, there's still things I can learn. There's still things that I do wrong. There's still things that I mess up on. I still get mad sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes I still spank for something stupid. Um, I used to spank all the time. I've gone way better. I hardly ever spank, but sometimes I still get frustrated and I spank out of anger instead of out of out of something that's actually wrong. And I have to stop and say, you know what? What am I doing? 
this isn't the kind of parent I want to be. I don't want to be an abusive person. I don't want to be someone who's just a tyrant, who doesn't allow for my kids to learn who they are. And then sometimes I go to the other other extreme. I say, look, I, I am not doing a good job help, helping to have expectations of them, holding them to a, a standard that isn't shifting. So there's... Uh, there, there's obviously going to always be a problem. So here's the thing. When you have kids, encourage them. Encouraging does way more than disciplining does. Remember that. Encouraging will get way better results than, than disciplining does. That doesn't mean you shouldn't have any discipline. That means encouragement needs to be part of your discipline. And maybe, and by the way, if you encourage them more and praise them more for what they did right, they wouldn't spend so much time doing wrong. And this is what some people say. Well, I don't want to give them a big head. If you're not giving them any encouragement, don't worry about it. They'll have such a small head, they won't even be able to think straight. They'll make them insecure their complete rest of their life. The real issue is not spanking or not spanking. Not spanking or not spanking. The real issue is self-confidence. There's plenty of people who have turned out to be great people who their parents spanked them. There's other people who turned out to be great people who their parents didn't spank them. The issue is, do you love your kids? Do you let them know that you love them? Are you there for them? Those really are the biggest things. Parenting isn't easy, but it's also not as hard as some of the books make it out to be. I mean, there's sometimes when it's just real simple. Spend some time with your kids. I, uh, my son, uh, one of my sons was acting out, and uh, I just started uh, spending more time with him, reading to him, uh, doing special men's days. It did wonders for his attitude. Um, another thing I, I did is, is instead of giving five-point instructions, just one-point instructions. Instead of go, go to your room, uh, uh, no, no, um, clean your room, get dressed, uh, and eat your food. You know, maybe just a small thing. Go sit down over there, eat your food. Rather, see what I mean? Little manageable pieces rather than this big thing that's just like, whoa. I mean, instead of saying go clean your room, go in there with them and say, okay, put that in that box. Pick up all the train tracks and put that in that box. See what I mean? Uh, little manageable pieces. So give clear directions. Let them know what you what you expect, and, and and if they don't do it, clearly explain. There's a lot of times when we just assume that our kids will know. We just assume that they'll figure it out, and it's like that's not very fair. Appreciate the good that they do, not always the bad. Don't always emphasize the bad thing. You did this wrong. You did this wrong. Maybe stop and say, look how what a good job you did at that. Um, let them make mistakes, especially as they get older. This is very important. The biggest way that we learn as we get older is we try something and it doesn't work. It blows up in our face and we say, wow, I'll never do that again. But sometimes as a parent, what we say is, I want to save my kid from the heartache. So I'm going to make sure that they never mess up. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't give them any – you should just have free reign and, and no boundaries. I'm not saying that at all. But there, all, there has to be a line where you say, okay, this is – now, be careful when you do this. But ultimately, if you've been saying that for years, they already know what, know your thoughts on it, and they have to make that decision for themselves. Once again, I'm not saying to just let your kids have free reign. Oh, my kids go to sleep whenever they want. They do whatever they want. They go wherever they want. They never tell me what they're doing. That's not good. Um, boys and girls are very different. This is just this is just a way of it. Um, boys uh, tend to be more oblivious. It's not that they're trying to be rebellious or stupid or stubborn. They're just – boys, we, we just don't think things through. Uh, girls, you know, they, they just have a lot – this is why girls make such good manipulators and connivers because they just – their brain is just – I don't want to say smarter, but – Smarter? <laughs> you have to understand that boys and girls need different different um, instruction. Um, physically, they are a lot different. There's just some things that happen to their brain. Uh, boys are going to have more of a hard time being impulsive, once again, because of genetics, because of their physical makeup. Not genetics, because of their physical makeup. They're, they're um, not astronomy. Um, uh, anyways, just because of how their bodies are made up. Uh, monologues really don't work. Um, if you have something that you really need to say to your kid, make sure that you can say it in 10 seconds. 10 seconds. That's it. If it goes longer than that, you're wasting your breath. They don't have the attention span for it, and it's just going to – make sure you say it slow, clear, concise, small words. If you're going on like 5 or 10 minute in monologues, you, just, you lost them. You're, you're just making yourself feel better, except you're actually just working yourself up. There's a lot of times as a parent you just have to step back and say, it's not that big of a deal. Just let it go. Um, limited timeouts have very limited benefits. Now, what I mean by this is 
a limited timeout. So don't just set your kid in, in timeout and forget about it for two hours. The rule is for however old they are. At three years old, a three-minute timeout is, is manageable. You're, you're helping them. And by the way, reading is a great way to help them learn to process their emotions, uh, learn to listen, att increase their attention span, but also have goals for them. Like, for instance, if you go to like a church or a club, um, it's a good idea um, to have them sit with you and learn how to sit quietly. This is something that's going to be a developed skill, but it will benefit them throughout their whole life. Um, there's a lot of times that kids just don't know how to how to be still. They don't know how to be quiet. They don't know how to not do be doing something. So they're always fidgeting. Ah, ah, I gotta touch everything. And they walk into somebody's house and they start touching everything. They get into everything. They're not good. So, anyways, uh, especially when you have an autistic kid, teaching them that they can do jittery things creatively rather than just destroying stuff. Um, so, okay, limited timeouts. You have a time frame, on, but then timeouts are very. Uh, have a very limited benefit to the child. When you do them too much, they just they kind of lose their benefit. Um, and also, make sure that you're watching them when they're in timeout. Um, kids will oftentimes goof off when they're in timeout just because they don't have the attention span and you leave them there for too long. Uh, put the child in a safe place and take a timeout yourself. If it's a baby, make sure that the crib is clear. Put them on their back. Let them cry and go to the other room and just calm down. Now, some people say, oh, that's abuse. Here's the thing. If you're really pushed to your limit, everybody has a limit. If you're pushed to your limit and your baby's screaming and screaming, it's okay to put them in their crib if, if it's a safe place. If it's a good rated crib, it's put together. There's nothing else in the crib. There's no blankets. Uh, there's no bumpers. There's you know, there's no animals or anything. They're left there by themselves where, where it's good. It's not too hot, that kind of stuff. Um, that's fine. Okay, a toddler, uh, go to your room and then just take a time out. If they won't go to their room, send them to their bed. If they won't go to their bed, there's this nice little piece of hair right on the back of their neck that you can take them over to their bed, and you say, you get out of your bed, and I'm going to pull you by, by that little piece of hair right there that really hurts, but it doesn't really do any damage. Um, just some good ideas there. Um, but anyway, it's just something where you can have a timeout. Do not lock them somewhere, like in the bathroom. Do not lock them in somewhere um, and turn off the lights and stuff. Don't try and scare them. Don't try to prey on their fears. Don't don't try and establish fears. Don't try and be a tyrant. Don't try and just always manipulate them. Don't try to don't try and and, and over dominate. There's just some things that you as a person need to grow and mature. They say that when you become a pastor, the first person that you change is yourself. You know, the first like I think it's the first seven years of being a pastor is you changing. Everything after that is slowly the church is changing. So okay, just some ideas there. Don't be the child you wish you had. I'm sorry, that's supposed to say don't be the parent you wish you had. Be who your child needs. Oh well, my parents were too harsh, so I'm going to go to the other, other extreme. Don't raise your kids out of your own insecurity. That's just a bad idea. Um, don't get your identity or your sense of worth from your kids. Oh, they're my everything. That's not good. That's not a healthy, developed human. You need to be um, where you are not dependent on your child, but where your child can feel like it's a safe place. There's a complete difference there. Uh, don't expect your kids to raise you. Um, this is especially important for alcoholics. Um, it's not their responsibility to drive, pick you up and pick you up from the bar. This is just not, this is just stupid stuff here. Um, don't expect your kids to have to do everything in the house and to have to be the adult of the house when you're not the adult of the house. You be the adult of the house. Um, don't have kids to try and make someone love you. Oh, well, you know, I've been getting with this guy and he's not committing, so I'm going to have sex with him. And we're not going to have, you know, protected sex. And then when I get pregnant, then he'll love me. And it's like, oh, it doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. You're just making it worse on the child because then the child will feel resented. Uh, like they're an accident, that kind of stuff. You, you really just want to watch out for that. Uh, once you cross the line, it's very hard to go back. Do get help. If you've been abusive, if you have been abusive before, it's very hard to get back out of that. So you really need to go get help. And you might say, "Well, the state will take my kids away." Here's the thing: they might take your kids away for a little bit, of, a little bit of time, but their main goal is to put you guys back together. So they're going to try, and they might take them for a little bit, but they they're going to try and reestablish that. If you're not on drugs, you're not drinking, and you're actually getting help, a lot of it will be just um, home visits. They're just making sure that everything's okay, and then if things get out of hand, then they'll step in and take the kids. Um, so don't don't be afraid to get help just because you don't want to lose your kids. It's better to lose your kids for a little bit than that you accidentally kill your kid because you're you know have no self control. 
Um, be aware of your kids' needs. They will naturally try to please you, and if they're and if they're doing something that is that is against that, and especially when they're when they're younger, as they get to be a teenager, especially if you didn't do a good job establishing a relationship as a toddler, they're they're going to have a lot harder time with rebellion, those kinds of things. And then also, as they're trying to find out who they are, if you don't meet that changing hormonal brain correctly. Um, you'll be seen as the enemy. And also don't forget that, kid, that teenagers are different really every day. Um, one day they'll hate you, one day they'll love you. I mean, it's just, it's impossible to know what they're thinking. And obviously with teenagers, they're probably not thinking. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but anyways, uh, be aware of your kids' needs. Every kid is different. Every kid has its own has their, their own needs. So remember that. Uh, when you do something wrong, own up to it. Look, I, I messed up. I shouldn't have yelled at you. I'm sorry that I did that. Will you forgive me? Don't say some lame, stupid, retarded thing. Respect your kids and expect them to, to respect you. You know, okay, look, if you wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't have done that. Hmm? I told you so. Yeah, maybe tone that kind of stuff down and instead say things that is mutually beneficial like this. I shouldn't have yelled. I'm sorry that I yelled. So you're not pushing blame on somebody else. You made the decision to, to yell. Your fault. It doesn't matter what the child was doing. You did not act like an adult. Um, another thing is a nighttime routine. Before they go to bed, do things like read a story with them, and go in a rocking chair with them, something like that, where it helps them to go to bed feeling loved regardless of the day's problems. Um, and especially if you do the same thing every single time, having a regular uh, nighttime, this is great. Um, for helping the kids uh, go, be able to go to sleep, that kind of stuff. So uh, have a have a clear routine. Uh, believe in second chances. Sometimes, you know, my, me and my me and my toddler, my toddler will just have a really rough time, and you know, we'd be going out for hours and just you know trying to resolve this issue, and it's just a huge you know issue. And and sometimes we say, look, I'm having a rough time, and he'll say, yeah, I'm having a rough time too. And I'll say, look, I I, I want to start over. Do you want to start? And he'll say yes. And so I'll pretend like my hand is a button. I'll say, let's push, let's put, let, let's restart. And then he'll push the button, and we just we put it all behind us. We forget that it ever happened. And no matter what was going on, who was right, who was wrong, we we move on. Really, just great. Uh, it's a great thing for him. It really boosts his his self esteem. It helps him to know that hey, you know. We, we can try it. We can try again. Um, and then remember that especially kids are going to have no-no days. And you know what? Toddlers do too. I mean, teenagers do too. Uh, naps are very important. Good sleeping habits are very important. Exercise is very important. Um, these are all good things. Sometimes toddlers just need to get out and run around outside, especially if you've been in this quarantine. You know what's up. And so what's happening is we've had poor parenting habits, and then we went into quarantine, and they went with us. Surprise, surprise. Um, also, spend time with your kids the first thing that they wake up. Act excited. Act, be excited to see them in the morning. Let them know that, that, that you know, during the night you miss them, that, that you love them. Make sure that they have their own bed. They sleep in their bed, not in your bed. There's that, obviously, you're trying to help them to establish, to establish a lot of psychological things that I really don't want to get, go into. But, um, but then when you see them in the morning, let them know, you know. Um, that, that, that you miss them, you, you enjoy seeing them. Obviously, um, if you have a baby, they should be in a crib next to your bed, not sleeping with you, and not in their own room. So anyways, uh, um, these are just really important times for them to um, have value. Um, slow down in life. Remember that your time is limited. Um, you will only bear a parent so long. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. Um, a lot of times... People lose lose their kids. Thirty eight kids die every single week in the U.S. from cancer. Remember that there's more important things than your stupid fight about uh, not running in the house or whatever. You could get sick and die. I mean, just so many different things can happen. Just slow down. You're not going to be a parent forever. Well, you'll be a parent forever. I mean, you'll not have kids in your house for forever. Your time is very limited. Make sure you do the best uh, with it. And that's where we're ending up with here. Um, whether you spink or whether you don't spink. Make the most of your time and do the best that you can.